Okay, how many times a day do we check our phones? Maybe 20, 30? What if I told you that the average person checks their phone over 100 times a day? That is a tremendous amount of time we're spending looking at our devices. But what's the alternative? We can either have our phones out all the time, interrupting us while we're in meetings or when we're out to dinner, or we can keep them tucked away in our handbags. But then there's this fear of missing something important. Now, for a lot of the men in the audience, which there aren't very many right now, um, you tend to keep your phones in your pockets. But for women, we don't have pockets that big. And sometimes we don't have pockets at all. So I started to think about ways where I could have the most relevant information sent to me without it being distracting to what I was doing or who I was with. And since most women I know wear jewelry, I thought that the time was right to finally put our clothing and our accessories to work and to have them help us and do more than just decorate us. I began to see this vision of the future where our clothing and accessories will become our devices, and they'll help make us better and healthier and more efficient. In a few years' time, everyone here is going to be shopping for electronics the way that today we shop for clothes. You'll want to buy the piece that fits your personal style, and you'll want to buy the functionality that fits your lifestyle. So, you know, there are a lot of amazing products on the market today. But a problem that I saw with a lot of these uh, products was that they were being built and sold as unisex offerings. And they tend to look a lot like gadgets. I noticed very few companies in the space targeting women, and even fewer were focused on the fashion aspect of wearable technology. And you can't just turn something pink <laughs> and think that women are going to want to wear it. <laughs> Men and women have very different wants and needs when it comes to our clothing, and we wear different things. So let's start designing these devices differently. There doesn't need to be a one-size-fits-all solution. So when I polled a lot of the women I knew, there were a few things that stood out that wearables needed to be in order to work for us. One, they needed to solve a problem in our lives. Two, the tech needed to disappear and exist in the background. Three, they needed to look good. In our case, the jewelry had to be something that you would want to wear, even if there was no technology inside. And finally, they needed to empower us. So that's why I decided to create an option for women. I designed a collection of smart jewelry. So this ring that I'm wearing right now is actually connected to my phone, and it will vibrate and flash a little color, depending on what notifications I've set it up to, to do. So for example, right now, I have it set up to vibrate three times and flash green when I get a text. It vibrates once and flashes red when I have my next meeting coming up. And it's not about getting every notification sent to us. We can filter down to the ones that are most important. So if you only want to know when the kids or the babysitter's calling, you can set it up that way. Alternatively, if you want to know every time someone likes your Instagram post, your social media post, you can also set it up that way. <laughs> So let me walk you through um, a few of the product decisions we made to get to this point, because although it looks very simple, um, it came with a lot of challenges. Here's a video of my very first prototype. I purchased a snappable <laughs> electronics kit online, and I 3D printed some jewelry and built this vibrating motor circuit so I could measure the intensity of the vibration inside of the ring. Because the first thing I wanted to know was, does it even feel good to have your jewelry vibrate on your finger? <laughs> and I used this to test it on different people to get their reaction, and the reactions were incredible. I still, to this day, get so excited when someone tries the product on for the first time. There's just so much surprise and joy in their reaction. And I knew I was on to something. So the next thing we looked at was making the tech part of wearable tech feel discreet and hidden. And so from an engineering design perspective, we really focused on the miniaturization of all the electronics. There are about 50 components in here, so we really worked to get them super, super small and tiny so that we can work with artists and designers to be able to create around it without a lot of restrictions. And with that, we made the decision not to have any buttons or switches or screens or plastic or USB ports. Uh, we wanted it to look like jewelry first. And this seems like an obvious thing, but it comes with a lot of challenges. For example, if you have no button on your product, how do you turn it on and off? And how do you reset it if something goes wrong? And if there's no charge port, how would you charge it? 
So we added a few key things to its core. It has an accelerometer, so while you can't turn it off by a button or a switch, you can set it to go into a low power state when it's not being worn or when it's not moving. And you can also tap on it oops, to get feedback on whether or not it's connected. I'm all good. Um, and then when we looked at charging, we really looked at how people wore jewelry today. So usually when you go home at night, you take off your jewelry, you put it back in your dresser or back in the box. So that's why we decided to make the box the charger. Uh, you simply just take out the jewelry, put it back at night, and voila, you're good to go. And the box even has a battery inside, so it doesn't need to be plugged in all the time. And the next thing we looked at was the actual jewelry part. So we made the decision to use all semi-precious and precious hand-cut gemstones. Um, and this is great for our customers, but typically in consumer electronics, this is a very strange thing, because no, no one product looks the same. Um, usually with consumer electronics, everything comes out exactly the same. Um, so this created a, a level of complexity in our manufacturing and quality control. Uh, you know, they're very frustrated with me because they don't know how to tell if something's good or not. Um, but, you know, it's a very important decision. So looking at these details and, um, you know, thinking through all these design decisions can really make your product feel magical. So they really should not be overlooked. And now I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes by Mark Weiser, who's said to be the father of the ubiquitous computing movement. And he says that the most profound technologies are those that disappear. And I couldn't agree with this statement more, especially when it comes to the Internet of Things and to wearable technology. We're at a point in time where technology can fit seamlessly into our environments and work itself, work its way into all the things that we interact with on a daily basis, like our clothing. So the next time you start a project, I always recommend to start with the problem that you're trying to solve first. But when you look for solutions, just simply look at the world around you. You could be wearing the answer to all of your problems. <laughs> Thank you.